We are group six with me, Alex, Jason, Hannah, Keely, and Natalie. Our presentation is on strawberry guavas. We're going to be covering a little bit of like the background on how they got here, some of their detrimental effects on the main Hawaiian islands, and some outreach. So let's get into it. All right, for a little background on strawberry guavas, um, they really like to be at a elevation of sea level to around 4,000 feet. They're common on all the major Hawaiian islands. They're not yet um, a huge issue on some of the Northwestern Hawaiian islands. Um, the reason strawberry guavas are so, such a problematic plant here in the main Hawaiian islands is because they don't have their normal system of checks and balances like most invasive species of plants do. What happens is their natural predators are mainly diseases and they come from Brazil. But the issue is those diseases aren't introduced to Hawaii yet, only the plant is, so their population can spiral out of control pretty quickly. Some other reasons they're particularly terrible for the environment and one of the most invasive awful species is um, they crowd native plants and compete for their resources they um, separate up natural areas because they grow in such dense abundance and that kind of creates unnatural divides in the landscape. Um, they just, that kind of blends into the next one. They disrupt native animal communities, uh, mainly birds and a lot of pollinators. They also disrupt natural water processes and reduce groundwater because they have huge transpiration rates. Like so much of the water that they absorb gets um, absorbed. I mean, evaporates through their leaves and leaves us with much less groundwater. Lastly, they provide refuge for alien fruit flies, which are another major pest in Hawaiian crops, often native crops too. All right, next slide. Uh, adding on to their background and identification, strawberry guava goes by a few names, cattle guava and cherry guava as well. Um, trees are usually two to six meters tall, they are part of the Myritaceae family, also known as the myrtle family. Um, the tree comes in yellow varieties and red varieties, but the red variety is more common in Hawaii and the yellow is more common in Brazil. The trees are easy to spot based on their fruits alone. Their fruits are also in huge abundance on the trees. If you've ever seen them hiking personally, they're pretty easy to spot. Next slide. So the strawberry guava was believed to be intentionally brought to Hawaii on the um, Blon, and the ship's voyage began in England and made its course to Hawaii. Along the way, it stopped throughout South America. Um, aboard the ship was na naturalist Andrew Bloxham, who gathered plants for agricultural use during their stop in Brazil. When brought to Hawaii, the strawberry guava intended to serve as a food source, but also an ornamental plant because of its attractive shiny leaves. By the early 1900s, the strawberry guava was reported to be growing wild and without its natural predators to keep it in check, coupled with introduced birds and mammals that rapidly spread the plant, it began to dominate Hawaiian ecosystems. Uh, this is a perfect example of the enemy release hypothesis, which predicts a species will experience greater distribution and abundance in a new habitat with decreased regulation from its natural enemies. So the two main dispersal agents of this plant include feral pigs and non-native birds, but there are other dispersers such as goat, sheep, and cattle. A study done by David Young in Kapahulu Valley on Maui found that feral pigs are the primary dispersal agents via gut transport of ingested seeds. Their ability to disturb ecosystems through their foraging and trampling habits make them big threats, allowing for invasive species such as strawberry guava to come in and outcompete native species. The study conducted um, found that the feral pigs have been feeding on strawberry guava for the past 30 years and that the seeds passing through the pigs were still viable. Conservation efforts in Kipahulu Valley successfully fenced out these pigs, but Dr. Art Medeiros discovered that non-native birds were still able to access fenced off areas and spread seeds. Uh, these non-native birds are primarily made up of the red-billed leothrix. 
So in order to understand the importance of strawberry guava research and management, you must learn how it negatively impacts Hawaiian ecosystems. Um, a couple of negative effects from strawberry guava are they crowd native species and compete for natural resources. This includes the sustainable wild harvesting of Hawaii's high valued native hardwood, acacia koa, which you can see on the picture on the slide. They're able to compete with this native tree because of its ability to form dense growth in undisturbed wet forests, which makes it a serious threat to the native ecosystems and to threatened and endangered species as well. Um, in addition to loss of habitat for native species, wet forests that have become rapidly colonized by strawberry guava lose more water to evapotranspiration than native forests. 27% more in recent measurements, which is a loss of 33 centimeters or 13 inches of annual rainfall from our natural watersheds. <clears throat> Dense plantations are able to release chemicals into the soils, which keep the native plants from competing for resources. Um, these toxic chemicals prevent the growth of the plant species, along with its abundant fruiting and aggressive vegetative growth. For biocontrol methods, strawberry guava can be easily removed by hand through the application of herbicides and by cutting stems, although only small patches can be managed this way. If the land is over 100 acres, these methods become extremely expensive and difficult, especially on terrain that's hard to get to and only reachable by helicopter. Next slide, please. A newer and more effective biocontrol method is Tectococcus ovatus. It is an introduced insect. It is also from Brazil and a natural enemy to strawberry guava. The introduction of this insect is expected to improve the effectiveness of other control methods by reducing strawberry guava's ability to regenerate following the treatment. Young Tectococcus insects feed on young leaves, leaving these growths called galls and the plant ends up allocating more of its energy into producing gels, taking away energy that would have otherwise be put into fruiting and getting taller. This overall makes strawberry guava less competitive to native plants than it once was. The introduction of this species to Hawaii was thoroughly researched and only feeds on strawberry guava. I believe 80 species of ornamental and native plants found in Hawaii were tested and none of them were affected. This included species that are even in the same family as ohia, mountain apple, and even common guava. And I know it seems like, what if, you know, strawberry guava populations um, go, get into decline like we want it to, and this insect moves on to other plants, but researchers believe that this won't happen as the relationship between the Tectococcus ovatus and strawberry guava is so close specific and they're so close that it is very likely for it to not happen. And if strawberry guava populations go down, Tectococcus insects would also just decrease in their population as well. Now that you learned a little more about strawberry guava and effects it has in basic species on the islands, here are some ways that you can get involved in action. Uh, provided in the link that should be in the description in the below. Uh, we have links to the Hawaii Association of Watershed Partnerships, uh, KUPU, which is a nonprofit uh, organization intended on sustainability and education for young adults, National Park Hawaii, and the Army Natural Resource Program. Uh, if you click on the links, they should lead you to a page where you can get a brief description of what these websites are. Basically, it boils down to being able to educate yourself on what goes on in the islands, how to conserve it and be able to remain sustainable about it, uh, and help protect uh, various places of the island from the watershed to the land, to the valleys, to the mountains. Uh, you have, you can apply for volunteer work or opportunities, you can donate, you can look for jobs. They can teach you about everyday actions that you can commit yourself to in order to show your support for conserving the islands and protecting the native species. 
and voice your support in various ways that is allowed. Uh, so to conclude on our project about strawberry guava, we have noted about how dangerous it is to the island despite how very low light it can be for us, for a lot of locals, for the economy. We also wanted to point out kind of the way it has destroyed native species and commits itself to being invasive to land. And so we want to get this message out to people who are concerned about the islands and want to protect it, want to be involved with conservation, where and uh, give you the means of knowledge and education to be able to look up what strawberry guava is, what it can do, and how you can get yourself involved in being able to fend this off and protect the native species of Hawaii. And here are our sources. Thank you.